Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to all of you in the name of Jesus Christ, who welcomes all to this place on this day so that we can stand before God and worship. It's indeed a pleasure to have everyone here this morning in God's house for worship. And if you are visiting with this morning, I want to say a particular word of welcome to you. We are glad that you are here, and we hope that you'll let us know who you are uh, and maybe how to say hello to you again. Uh, we have a register at the end of each row uh, that you can sign your name to. Just let us know that you're here. We'll pass them down the row and uh, keep up with who has been with us this morning. It's an especially uh, wonderful day in, in my mind uh, because we're able to celebrate Scout Sunday uh, with the with the pack and the troop here that uh, does so much, uh, and that we here at First Presbyterian Church are especially proud of. We're glad. I'm. I'm especially glad. My job's easy today. All I have to do is preach. I've got. I've got the uh, members of the pack and the troop here to help me. They're going to do uh, all the worship, except for the sermon this morning. And I am just tickled to death uh, to see the gifts that they're going to bring to you in the work that they'll do this day. And I do have um, a couple of announcements, but before I get to that, I want to tell you, uh, I myself am particularly excited about this because I grew up in scouting. I'm an Eagle Scout. I worked for the movement. Uh, my first job out of college was working for the Boy Scouts. I still have my Class A uniform necktie that they give you when you work in the professional service. And I wore it today. Uh, King Dixon spotted it at breakfast and knew what I was doing. What he didn't see and what he didn't know was that I still have my, uh, and I don't know what class it is, but my um, Scout Issue socks. That's right. And they are comfortable and I'm glad to have them and proud to be wearing them this morning. So uh, uh, even though I, I still wear the uniform of how I work here today, I've got my Scout Issue socks and I'm ready uh, I am prepared for whatever comes next. I want to let you know that there will be a luncheon afterwards, uh, that the Scouts, our own Robbie Hill, is back there cooking away right now. And if you've never had, and if you've been here before, you've had a meal with Robbie, but you know what that means. I mean, it's going to be good food and lots of it. We will accept donations uh, for that, although there, there is no specified fee for it. If you feel moved to give a donation to help offset the cost of the meal, it's appreciated. We hope that you will join us uh, for a fellowship luncheon afterwards. Everybody that's in this room and folks that are within the sound of my voice, I hope you'll be able to join us for that so we can uh, celebrate this day together. A couple of announcements for uh, for folks here at the church, too, I uh, want to let you know that the youth are planning a trip to see the Swamp Rabbits uh, hockey team in a couple of weeks on the 22nd. We need to know if you want to go, middle school youth and up, we need to know if you want to go by Wednesday. The cost is $20, and uh, you will receive with that a ticket to the game and um, a T-shirt, for the, a Swamp Rabbits T-shirt. Uh, so we just need to know so we can get the order in for them. But we want you to come and be a part of that. We have a sign-up sheet already, which is out in front of the church office. And we have a number of folks that are already signed up, so we're excited about that. If you need more information, ask me or ask Travis Thomas. He'll be glad to give you the information and the scoop on that. Uh, and he's been sort of leading the, our efforts with that. And thank you, Travis, uh, for doing it. Uh, we also have... Um, Coming up on Thursday evening, you've seen, uh, you may have seen this insert in your bulletin. Uh, let me tell you how that's going to work. It's for folks that are, that it's going to be a parents' night out for here at the church. So if you want to come and be a part of it, you're more than welcome. But it's a, it's a group effort. We're going to have folks here. Our youth are going to take care of our smaller youth, our kids. The cost is $10 a child. We're going to meet here at 530 the adults don't get to scatter like the wind. This is not an organized babysitting service. The adults will then wait and gather. When we drop off the kids, we will gather together, and we're going to go together to the Capitol Theater where we're going to share a meal together and see uh, the movie that's playing there at the Capitol. I don't know which one that is, but we'll be uh, watching a movie together. Then we'll come back and we'll get our children. So that's how it's going to work. It's a planned outing for the parents and a planned evening of fun for uh, the little kids. So 
uh, come and be a part of that. And again, the cost is $10 per child uh, if you want to be a part of that. Finally, one more announcement. That is, uh, next Sunday after worship, we will have a congregational meeting uh, for the purpose of hearing uh, an annual report and for the purpose of adjusting the terms of call of yours truly, the pastor. Those are all of our announcements this morning. Again, we are glad that you're here. We look forward to worshiping this day, celebrating our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and doing so with our pack and our troop here on Scout Sunday. At this time, I'd just like to mostly just thank First Presbyterian Church for all that they do for the scoutings here. Uh, they actually give us a home. They give us the basement. Uh, Kay sometimes not happy with us, but most of the time we try to straighten up the best we can. But uh, from everybody, uh, we cannot thank First Presbyterian Church enough for all that y'all have done for us and continue doing for us. But uh, as Scoutmaster, I remember the service last year. Do you have that fire starter? No, I was told not to bring it back. Okay, I was just checking because you're kind of dangerous with that thing. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> uh, but uh, as of now, we're going to start our service. Uh, the scouts are going to process in. But like you said, uh, we're having a meal afterwards. Uh, please come. Uh, there's no charge. If you'd like to make a donation, that's fine. But please come and eat with us. Uh, we'll, the scouts is going to wait the tables and serve. And uh, But please come and enjoy what meal that Robbie has fixed for us today. And... Uh, We'll enjoy and we'll fellowship a little bit more then. Thank you.
Will you please join me in the call to worship that's found in your bulletin? Praise the Lord. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord But they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God, God calls us together as we worship this morning. From our river and play within the world. God gathers us to give thanks for creation's goodness, for the strength to labor, for the wisdom to relax. Will the congregation please stand for the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the light is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the congregation please be seated, and will the children come forward for the children's sermon? <coughs> question for all y'all. Is anyone hungry? You're hungry? You shouldn't be after that big breakfast this morning. <laughs> Jesus said, blessed are those who are hungry, who hunger for thirst and for righteousness. They will be filled. Do you think Jesus was talking about wanting breakfast? No. Although I would imagine Jesus, while here on earth, would have enjoyed a good breakfast, in this verse, he is not referring to physically filling our bodies with food or drink. He was referring to our hearts. Jesus was talking about being spiritually hungry and thirsty. When our hearts are hungry and thirsty, we need to fill them with right, the righteousness of God. So I have another question. This one might be a little bit more challenging. Can any of you tell me the scout law? I'm going to ask some of my scouting friends to help me with this. Okay, scouts, what's the scout law? A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. So, as a scout, we all follow this law and repeat it on a regular basis to remind us of how important these values are to us. By aiming to be all these great things, we are hungering for righteousness. We are reminded to care for others take care of ourselves, and in turn, our spiritual needs are being fed. Thank you for giving me this few minutes this morning. I hope each of you remember to be trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent as you continue to hunger for this righteousness. Please pray with, me, pray with me. Dear God, thank you for blessing us daily. Thank you for allowing us to feel hunger and allowing us various ways to become full and satisfied. Help us to continue work daily. In your name we trust, amen.
Let us pray. O God Most High, you meet us where we live and invite us to be part of your purpose. All thanks and praise to you, for you hear our prayers for the church, the world, and all who live in it. God of majesty and glory, through Jesus Christ, you summon us into your compassion for all creation. Renew in us your call and release us from all fear, that we may testify in words and deeds to your steadfast love for all. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Psalm 62, 5-8 For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. Him alone is my rock and my salvation. My fortress I shall not be shaken. On God rest my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge, is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people, pour out. Your heart before him, God is a refuge for us. Psalm 15, O Lord, who may abide in your tent, who may dwell on your holy hill. Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. First Timothy 4, 7 through 12. Have nothing to do with profane myths and old wives' tales. Train yourself in godliness, for while physical training is of some value, godliness is valuable in every way, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, for to this end we toil and struggle, because we have our hopes set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially those who believe. These are the things you must insist on and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Romans 8, 39. Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ, who will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written. For your sake we are being, we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor love, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ and Jesus Christ our Lord. Matthew 5, 1-6 When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Tom, you sure you don't want me to bring the fire starter back up? Seems like everywhere I take my flint and steel and use it, people give me a hard time about it. Last year, I was told that I might have started a fire hazard here in the church. 
So I won't do that this year. Unfortunately, it would have been a lot of fun. Thank you, Scouts. You're doing a great job. Thank you particularly to those of you who read Scripture this morning. You all did fantastic. It's appreciated. Friends, will you all please join me in prayer? Holy and loving God, we pray for your Spirit to move among us this day. That the Word that's been read will indeed be, indeed be your Word that is written on our hearts. And the Word that's proclaimed in this place will indeed help us to grow nearer to you and to see you as you reveal yourself more and more to us each day. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Friends, for those of you who are visiting, you kind of caught us in the middle of something, but that's okay. You caught us in the middle of a series. Last week I started a series on uh, the Beatitudes, the, the series of blessings that Jesus gives to the people uh, as it was just read to you in Matthew's Gospel in the fifth chapter. Jesus goes up into a, what's called a mount, at least a hilly area. He sits down and the disciples sit down around him and the crowds gather around. They want to hear what Jesus is teaching. This is known as the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus begins forth with this discord or this discourse. This week we'll be talking about what he means when he says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. As well as, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Now, to just catch you up on where we are, if you weren't here last week, what we talked about, we sort of named the series, we called it Bless Your Heart, with the simple explanation being that sometimes bless your heart doesn't mean exactly what it feels like on the surface. We talked about bless your heart might not always be a compliment. It might kind of stick just a little bit. But in this case, the, the Beatitudes, these blessings that Jesus talks about, they don't stick, they don't hurt, they don't cause us problems, but what they might do is mean a little more than what they appear to on the surface. And so today we'll talk about blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. It seems counterintuitive. It seems wrong. It doesn't seem right because particularly in today's society, we don't identify with the meek. That's not what we tell people. We tell our children, be aggressive. Stand up for what you want. Stand up for what's right. Stand up for what's yours. Stand up for what's important and be strong about that. We see meek or being meek as the opposite of that. We've come to associate in today's society, we've come to associate meek with being timid, laying down, just letting things go by, just whatever. I'm not going to cause any problems. But that's not really what Jesus is talking about here. That's not exactly who Jesus is talking to. He's not talking to people that are just going to let anything happen, let anything go, let it all just pass on by them without so much as standing up or sticking up for themselves. Meek hasn't always meant what it means to us today. When we read those words, maybe we need to understand them a little differently. Now, for instance, in the 17th century, if you saw the word meek written in the English language, what it really meant was to be strong and to be gentle of spirit. To be the kind of person that is kind of like a lion that doesn't need to roar. Everybody knows that it's a lion and therefore doesn't need to make his presence known or to be overly aggressive. To be meek in that understanding is to be of the kind of spirit, of the kind of person 
that everyone could count on, that everyone could count on to stand up and say the right thing at the right time, the gentle person that would take care of the weakest among the community and not make a big deal about it, not go on and on about what a big thing it was that they were taking care of the little person, the little child that needed help, someone who you just knew was going to do the right thing and going to be the right person in that particular place. And we all know people like that. Maybe we're related to them. Maybe it's somebody in our family. Maybe it's somebody that was a family friend. The wise folks within the church that you knew, they didn't have to talk all the time. But you knew when they said something, it meant something. It was reasoned. It was well considered. And it had power and impact. We all know folks like that. The folks that were strong and of a gentle spirit. Maybe that's closer to what meek really means. Now there's other ways of interpreting it also. Uh, it turns out that if you read French, which I don't, I know very little French, but I've heard a word here and there. If you saw the word meek in any of the French Bibles, it would be translated as the word that we know today as debonair. Do you all know what debonair means? You've heard it. And we think about it in, in our in our words today we think about debonair as somebody that's very sharply dressed and their hair is is exactly the right place and they just look right and smart and fancy all the time that's not what it means at all in this context what it really meant back then was somebody that just looked at life with kind of a smile on their face somebody that looked at life and they concentrated on the things that were important. And if it wasn't important, if it wasn't godly, they didn't worry about it. You might say they were cool. You might say they were comfortable in their own skin. You might say they understood exactly what was important and they didn't sweat the small stuff. Literally, the word means having a good air around them, the good air. And even though I, I don't study French, I never have, I read that and I thought, wow, that, that's a different way of thinking about the meek. Blessed are the gentle in spirit. Blessed are the ones who focus on what's important. And don't worry about the rest for they will inherit the earth. It's interesting, when Jesus says, blessed are the meek, He is almost exactly quoting Psalm 37, which He would have been very familiar with. That was, after all, Jesus' prayer book, the Psalms. And if you look at what's in Psalm 37, it's, like I said, almost identical. It says, in verse 11, the meek will inherit the land. Land, and if you transpose for Greek and Hebrew and all that stuff, what you find is land and earth really mean about the same thing. Jesus is underlining, highlighting the, the Psalms and saying to them, Blessed are you who are of a strong and gentle spirit, for you're going to inherit the land. And when they hear these words, inherit the land, what it means is that God's promises are true for you. That to be of a, a strong and gentle spirit means that you are going to be the recipient of all that God has promised to the world. What we're talking about here is the idea that people who are meek, people who are of the strong and gentle spirit, as the psalmist says, they are the people that wait on the Lord. 
that patiently wait and hear what God has to say and know that even though things may be difficult and hard sometimes, that God is always faithful. That God will keep God's promises. It meant something to hear that to those people sitting on that mountain. And it means something to us to hear that promise that being of a strong and a gentle spirit, being of the kind of, or having the kind of faith wherein we trust God and we don't worry so much about the little stuff, that this points towards the promise being fulfilled for us too. We wait on the Lord and we worry about the things that God considers important. That's what those people that we know, whoever you were thinking of that had that strong and gentle spirit, whoever it was in your life, whether it was your grandfather or your father or mother or someone you knew, they waited on God, didn't they? They trusted God and they believed that the promise will be fulfilled. Strong in the gentle spirit meant something. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those of strong and gentle spirit. Blessed are those who just worry about what God is worried about and don't sweat the other things. Moving on, Jesus continues. He said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. So, I'm going to need the scouts to help me. Scouts, can you all help me out a little bit? You all excuse us a second. I've got to ask them a couple of questions, okay? So, who's got their camping merit badge? It's okay. There's a little hesitancy there. They're afraid if they stick their hand up, they may be asked a question which is correct. Who's got wilderness survival? All right. So if I'm lost in the woods, what is my main objective? What, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? What, what do I need to accomplish? Build a fire. Build a fire. Okay. That's something important. What else? Survive. Do what? Survive. My life? Survive. We're trying to survive. That's right. And what do we need to survive? We need a fire. Why do we need a fire? So we can stay warm. That's that's non-negotiable, right? What else do we need? Water. Water. That's exactly right. We need water. And when you need water, is there a word for that? If If I really want some water really bad, what's the word I use? Thirsty. That's right. What else do I want? If I've got some water, what else might I want? Soda. Soda? That's That'd be good, too. What else? Shelter? Shelter's a really good thing. She said shelter. Okay. I'm sorry, that was my mistake. We need shelter. We need water. One other thing. Food. And if you want food, what's the word for that? Hungry. Hungry. I've read that somewhere. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They, They learned the merit badge as well. Even the cubs, the cubs stood up. They knew what they needed. They knew if you get in trouble, you need water. You need shelter. They knew you're going to be thirsty and you're going to be hungry. Those are the non-negotiables if you get into trouble. When we're hungry and we're thirsty, those are things we have to have. We can't survive without water. We can't survive. We can survive longer without food than we can water. Some of us, myself included, could go a while without food, I suppose. But we can't go without water at all, and eventually we can't go without food. So if we hunger and we thirst, we are after things that are not negotiable. Those are needs that must be met. And the truth is, If we're out there in the woods, we know from camping and from wilderness survival, if we're out there in the woods, we know that job one is to establish a source of water if we're able to, and to find a way to get shelter and to find something 
non-poisonous, I hope, to eat and to not rest until we do that. Because finding our way back isn't going to happen unless we meet those needs. Everything depends on it. We can't rest until we quench our thirst. We can't rest until we make some provision or some plan about our hunger. Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For Matthew's gospel, for what Jesus says, everything depends on righteousness. Everything depends on setting things as right as possible with God, following the way that God has for us to go. It's a huge theme all throughout Matthew's gospel. It's what Matthew highlights amongst what Jesus says all throughout the gospel. You see, for him, for Jesus, righteousness is like water. It's like food. They are the things that we hunger and must thirst for. The things that are essential. What does that look like? What does it look like to hunger and to thirst for righteousness? Well, simply put, it's to look around and to see things in the world that aren't correct, that aren't right. Jesus said often that the kingdom has come near to us, and sometimes we get glimpses of the beauty of that, but we look around and we see people that don't have enough to eat. We see people that are starving spiritually, we see people that are in deep pain. To hunger and thirst for righteousness is to not be satisfied until at least the people that are around us, that we do all that we can to help them. You see, Jesus promises that if you hunger and thirst for that righteousness and you set about trying to fulfill that with God's help, then you will be filled. And that's one of those things where we fill ourselves by filling other people, by reflecting God's grace, and by doing the work that we're called to do. You see, works that we're called to do good actions, feeding the hungry, being nice to people, taking care of people, sheltering the poor. Those aren't things that we mark up on a scoreboard so that maybe we'll have enough good works that we'll end up in heaven. That's us hungering and thirsting for the things that God says we must hunger and thirst for. We do that not because we're trying to build up and satisfy some number. We do that because we're responding to God's great work in our lives. The saving grace of salvation that speaks to all of us and says, God speaks in love to each and every one of us that goes all the way to the cross and beyond. When we survey what God has done and is doing for us, we respond. And we respond with a hunger and a thirst for helping build God's kingdom in this place for the righteousness that Jesus speaks of. So that the kingdom that is coming near to us will come more and more and more real with each passing day as the Spirit of God moves in each of us and fills us of our thirst and our hunger for the world that God has planned for all of us. Friends, we're called to be thirsty for what God wants. Now, years ago, and I've, I've preached this particular item before, and I told them the same exact thing. I'll tell you again today. Years ago, maybe you've seen there was a commercial on TV, and 
forgive me, but it was a beer commercial, but most of them are these days. But there was a man who billed himself as the most interesting man in the world. And he closed it always out by saying, stay thirsty, my friends. Irrespective of what he is talking about selling, the truth is our calling here in the church is to look to one another and to hear God's call for us that we too are to stay thirsty, stay hungry, to keep thirsting for God's righteousness in our lives, in our community, and in the whole world. This is our calling. This is our blessing. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand and join us to say what we believe, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the body. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Through Jesus Christ, we have come to know the abundance of God. Let us then give generously as has been given to us. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for your generosity to us. Bless these gifts and multiply them for the sake of those in need around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're now pleased to rec uh, to welcome uh, the troop chaplain Tommy Lee, who's going to I think help coordinate all of this. But we have some uh, we have some awards of God and country and and uh, and others to be presented. Thank you. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be here on Scout Sunday, and I want to thank particularly all the scouts and the leaders who have worked hard to prepare for this morning. We practiced a long time yesterday. The snow, our great blizzard of Lawrence for 2020, was a great distraction. The boys wanted to go outside and see the snow, but getting them inside to, to do something was, was a little bit of a chore, but we have fun uh, anyway as well. I want to begin by first recognizing, uh, as many of you know, our God and Country program is age divided. We start with kindergarten now with uh, God, with Jesus and me, and then it goes to uh, first and second and third grade with God and me and then we have God and family for the little bit older and then we get into the Boy Scout age there's I think I said it back there well I'll get them right in a second there's God and family then there's God and life in the in the Boy Scouts I want to first recognize our Cubs who do the scheduling situations this year we started kind of late so they've not completed their requirements so we won't be presenting their awards this morning but I wanted to recognize the Cub Scouts that are enrolled and actively meeting and working on their God and Country award. We have several who are here this morning in the uh, choir loft. We have uh, Jesus and me, God and me, and God and family. If you are enrolled in the class on Monday nights, would you please stand up where you're at for us? Go ahead. I know um, I have a few that aren't, aren't with us this morning. But these are working on their various, uh, you can sit back down, thank you, you uh, various uh, uh, God and Country awards uh, and should be completed soon and we hope to present maybe at the Blue and Gold Banquet coming up very soon. This morning is also very special. We have uh, two Boy Scouts receiving their God and Life. Now God and Life is one of the most difficult ones to to earn, I think partly because as the boys get older, they get interested in other things and it's hard to keep them focused. But we have these two young men and I want to call them forward and I'd like for their families to come forward. There are uh, Duncan Curry and Ben Thomason. If you would come down front here and if your parents would join you down front, I would also like to invite Reverend Chaz Hayes and Mr. Dennis Hampton, if they're here, to come forward. It is normal with the God in life that the young man worked through their home church to earn the God in life award. And that's what these guys have done. I, they attend Chestnut Ridge. So we have their youth minister, if I'm not correct. We have, a, if you want to stay down here, we have a microphone for you over here. And um, so that you can pin down there. And Mr. Dennis Hampton, who have been their counselors, working with them on their God in life. And... what you need and I'll let them them speak to us more specifically what they have done for the God and life program these uh, two men have um, had several requirements that they had to fulfill uh, this has been a process that has lasted months um, that begins at its very core in the very uh, day that we begin this pro um, this project they began with a reading plan something that they would do on their own, on their own time, studying daily in the scripture and reading through a reading plan. So automatically when this program begins outside of our meetings, they increase their dedication to the word of God. Uh, as we continue, we work through the scripture and certain lessons that they had to do in multiple service projects. We look at different people in the scripture um, and discuss what that might have to do with these men at their uh, current stage in life, we focused mainly on the Apostle Paul and his calling, and we spent weeks and weeks and weeks 
talking about the Apostle Paul, we first looked at his call, his encounter with Jesus Christ. And we talked about what that means for these men and how they've encountered Christ and how the encounter wasn't where it stopped for Paul. Paul came face to face with a Savior and that began his ministry. And so as they've completed this final step of the God and Life program, we have been talking through what that call looks like in their life. Not only are they called into relationship with a Savior, into relationship with Jesus Christ, but both of them have been called to go forward in ministry, to become servants, to become leaders in their community, in their troop, and in their families. They've done service projects that include leading Bible studies for people around them that have involved going out into different ministries and missions and serving their community and serving others, seeing what they've done. And so they've continually um, learned what it means to serve God where they're at, how to make God a part of your everyday life, how to be a leader for Christ. And they have been completely and totally dedicated to that and learning what that means. And I've been uh, very proud, not only in their dedication to this program, their willingness to do all the requirements that everything, uh, everything they needed to accomplish this, but their dedication to step up as leaders. Uh, to willingly do those service projects, to willingly grow in faith and in the Word. So we're proud of them. Well, they'll be uh, presented with a, a green ribbon today, and that's representative of the continued growth that they'll have. But um, this morning, I want to present you both with your certificates of completion. We're awful proud of what you've done. <coughs> All right, so now it's time to recognize our counselors for all the hard work they did for us. They stayed after um, many a Sunday nights and took time after school to help us get this thing. It's been a long road to get here, but luckily we were able to get there with the assistance of Mr. Chaz and Mr. Dennis. They had to put up with us a lot, mainly me. Duncan's pretty quiet, but they had their hands full with me, so it was a, it was a tough road. And... Um, i just like to thank them for everything they did about this whole year working on this. And Chaz wanted a patch the whole time, so he's finally about to get his patch. While they are pinning their counselors, there's a special element to today's recognition. As I was telling you earlier, there's several age-divided age, uh, awards you earn in the God and Country program depending on your, on your age. And both Ben and Duncan have been in Scouts since they were Tiger Cubs. And as they have moved through the program, 
They have earned all of their God and Country awards up to now. And this is a very special recognition. I was counting with uh, our scoutmaster yesterday in Hunter Hall. I was looking at the plaque up there of Eagle Scouts, and there's 57 names on those plaques as of right now, and we counted six more, approximately five to six more, that have earned their Eagle who have not yet had their plaque name put on the plaque. So we're looking at just over 60 scouts that have come through this troop who have earned their Eagle Scout Award. I was telling them, I've, I've been in this troop as both a youth and as an adult. So I've been in this troop since the 1970s. I know of two young men who have earned all four of their God and country programs up till now. That's a long time. There's only been two that I know. Of. I'm not going to call any names because I could be wrong. There may be another one or two. If you really want to know, you can ask me afterwards. But today we want to recognize both Ben and Duncan for earning the, what we call the, the four-star re, uh, rec recipient, four-star recognition for earning all four of their uh, God and Country program. This is the certificate for Ben and his team. And this is their certificate and pen for Duncan. And so it's very special that we have two going through, going, entering this special recognition that's very limited, much more limited in this troop anyway than the Eagle Scout Award. But it, I think it fits very well with this, the sermon topic this morning, the hunger and thirst for righteousness as both these young men have, have a hunger and seek a knowledge of learning more about Jesus as they grow at, in, in age and grow in uh, maturity and grow in spirituality. So congratulations. I'm very proud of both of you. And as we conclude our service, our hymn is 610. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my dear Redeemer's praise. Will you stand, please, as we sing? to see you. Give you Just the left hand. Once the again, I'd like to welcome everyone to come join us after the service in Hunter Hall for a time of fun and fellowship. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. Help us to do our best every day. Help us to be kind to other people and to help them at all times. Bless our parents, teachers, and leaders, and all the members of scouting. Bless us, Lord, in your love for us. Help us to be better scouts and do our best for you. Bless this food that has been prepared for us. 
Use it to strengthen our bodies. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good job.